It is time to announce the winner of the back to school giveaway. We have the YouTube URL from the entry video there. We're going to get our comments. Looks like we had 109 entries. Thank you all so much for entering. And now it is time to pick our winner. The winner of the back to school giveaway is Hannah Rose 219 and she said that her favorite character from Peter Pan was Nana. She loves all the Disney dogs and Nana is such an amazing Disney doggo. I 100% agree with that statement. Make sure to check out all of the information down below in the description on how to claim your prize. Also, if you guys are interested in the new Alien Remix pin collection and plush collection that is being released on Shop Disney, they were released today if you're watching this video the day that I posted it. So check Shop Disney if you'd like to pick up any of those pins or plush. Make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video so you guys do not miss all of the tips and tricks for your Disney display. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello Disney fans, my name is Haley and welcome back to the Disney Cupcake channel and welcome to another room cleaning video. As you guys know, I love cleaning my room, organizing my room, creating new displays, and I recently asked you guys on Instagram for some questions regarding my display, so I'll be answering those today here throughout the video, throughout the time lapses, hopefully helping you guys with your collection. If you have any more questions about collecting or collections or about my display specifically, leave them down below in the comments and I can answer those in the room tour video, which will be coming here in a couple of days. I also forgot to mention that this time I'm going to be doing a Pixar themed display in honor of the 25th anniversary and all of the new Pixar merchandise coming out. There is a lot of it, like these Alien Remix pops, that I would just love to showcase here in the display case and just to help celebrate the 25th anniversary of Pixar. I have a lot of cleaning to do today, lots of reorganizing to do, so let's just get into the first question. How long does it usually take to take down and put up a new theme on your display case? That is a great question. For this video, I'm actually going to set up a timer here on my phone and we can truly see how long it takes for me to dust. And with that said, do not forget to subscribe down below to this channel. It really, really helps me out and I greatly appreciate all of your support. And then that way you guys also will not miss my next room cleaning video because I think the next display after this is going to be Halloween. And I also received some questions about where I store my Funko Pops, and I'll have that video linked down below if you would like to see some shots of where I keep my, my Funko Pop boxes. <laughs> Cannot speak today. So in that video I showed where they were, but some people asked for some more in-depth of like how and where I store them. So I store them in our storage room in Rubbermaid bins, that way if something were to happen, they would not get water damage or anything like that, and they're also not getting all bumped around, that way they're not getting dented or scratched, and it's just easier to stack them and move them around. And other than that, I don't really sort them at all. They're not sorted. I have no idea what boxes are in what bins. How do you dust everything? For my more general, quick cleanings, I use this Tokyo Disney little duster. This is just great just to wipe off my desk, nice and simple. And I really don't want to get this too, too dirty, but it's nice for just a quick little dusting. But for the bigger dustings that I'm doing today, to clean all of my figures, I will use a paintbrush. That way it doesn't damage, scratch, chip anything to any of the figures and that way I can really get in any of their details and really dust them nicely. To actually dust the displays or the shelves themselves I will use I will use the different dusters and little cloths and everything just depending on the surface and I have my glass display case so I will use special things for that as well. I also have this other little extendable duster to get any of the higher shelves. On all of my figures and on some of the surfaces I do not use any cleaning products just because I don't know how that will affect the figure over time, if it will get sticky or anything like that, but on the surfaces I use every single day I will use a cleaner on them. I also apologize Kylo is barking. He likes to watch other dogs and people drive by out the window. <laughs> now some of my displays actually as I do them I will just switch them. So for example this little map section since I am doing a Pixar theme I'm going to check through my maps and see if I have any Pixar ones that I can put in the front row that way they're visible for the theme. So for example this Magic Kingdom one I have a little laugh floor map 
which will perfectly fit the Pixar theme. And I'm going to do that here for all of them, just to shuffle them around a bit and be able to display different ones. I'm also going to be sharing some tips throughout this video that may be a little bit repetitive. And one of the things that I highly recommend if you're just starting a collection would be to use maps. Maps are free, postcards are not very expensive, and they make a great little addition to any display. This helped to really add height to this back shelf, and it looks really good. You can always print out pictures, pictures from your trip, pictures of like you and your family at Disney, anything like that very inexpensive and definitely helps out your displays and your collection. As I mentioned here, the maps are one of my favorites to use just because they're from the parks, they represent the parks, and they just look really, really cool. Also, as I'm going through the maps here, I'm going to pick out the ones that I would like to use for the rest of my display. So I have a lot of maps here from Pixar Fest, from Disneyland that I for sure want to use. And now it is time to remove all of the figures and then I'll actually dust the surface and that is what I will do here for all of my displays that you guys will see. Another question I get pretty frequently is how to make more room for your displays. If you're running out of some space, one item that I've recommend in the past, I am going to recommend again, that is these little clear display stands. These are great little space savers and they look great in any display. I really like the clear ones because they'll match anything. And then you can also still see the figures from all the way around. It doesn't look super bulky. It doesn't take light away from any of the figures and it just looks really clean. So I personally recommend these. I'll have the Amazon linked down below. They come in sets of different sizes. This is the biggest one and they will fit like Funko Pops underneath and Vinyl Mations and Tsum Tsums you can stack underneath. And then the great thing about that is if you were to stack Tsum Tsums underneath, you could still put figures on top. That will really help you save space, especially when trying to display your items. It looks fabulous. I could not recommend this enough. If you have a collection or if you're looking to display your collection or just everyday items. If you have shelves in your house, they look so cool on them. I hang up all of my pictures with washi tape. That way it doesn't damage the actual photo and it does not damage the paint on the wall. How often do you switch your displays? I switch my displays depending on the next movie release, the next big event happening, or just on the holiday slash season. In January, I will have the leftover like Christmas things still set up. In February, I will do a Valentine's display. In March and April, I will have my Easter display. And then also between that time, end of April and through June, I will have my Walt Disney World or Disney Parks display, just like fun summer vacation vibes happening. In July, I will set up my birthday display. In August and September, I may do another Disney Parks display or a Pixar display. Or if there's a new movie coming out, I will definitely do a display on that. Or if I got new items, I'll just display those. Just kind of a random time in October, I will do my Halloween display. In November, I will have a little bit more of my Halloween display, and then about halfway through November, I will switch it to Christmas, and then it'll be Christmas for like a month and a half or so. So I really, every single year, I like to have my decorations for all of the holidays, and then in between, I really like to do Disney parks or a section representing the newest movie being released. One other thing I forgot to mention, the best way to clean your room is to have a speaker going with music. If I'm doing a Disney Parks display, I'll listen to Disney Parks music. This time, I'm doing a Pixar display. So what better way to jam than to play Pixar's greatest hits? How do you decide if you should purchase a new series or collection? So that will really just depend on what the item is. Whenever I first started collecting in 2009, I didn't really know what I wanted to collect. I know I wanted to collect Disney things, I wanted to collect Funko Pops and pins, but at the time, Tsum Tsums didn't exist, Wishables didn't exist. I really didn't know 
besides those two things. And over time, you'll learn what items you really like and what you really enjoy. As I mentioned here, 2009, I started buying some more Disney stuff, just trying to figure out what I really liked to collect and to display. So at the time, I purchased a lot of different Disney items. So that was just kind of like a trial and error kind of thing. Now, I know for sure what items I like to collect, what items I really enjoy, and those items are mini ears, mystery minis, Funko Pops, Vinylmations, old Disney Park stuff, new Disney Park stuff, anything dated or anything that represents a special anniversary or decade or anything like that, wishables, popcorn buckets, international park merchandise, sippers, pins, there's actually a lot of things. But I won't go and buy every single new wishable or every single new pin because it is mainly about what you like. For example, this castle collection is a pretty new series and my reasoning for purchasing it was I really like the parks, I love the different castles, the structures of them, the details in them. I really like the jumbo pins. I thought the display case was beautiful. I really thought it was just going to be a wonderful collection. And for some of my other pins, I don't go again and buy every single Disney pin. I really like the food pins, the park pins, the attraction pins. So those are just the ones that I buy. So in the end, you're really just buying the items that represent things that you like or different movies that you like. I won't go buy every single new Funko Pop that has all the variations. I really don't buy variations anymore because I realized I don't really have the space for them and I rather have a bunch of different characters than a bunch of variations of specific characters. Mickey's an exception. <laughs> it Your collection will grow and adapt and you will change your mind about things and maybe get rid of some things and start collecting something new. It's really hard to like give advice with that kind of stuff because in the end it's about the items that you like and items that you enjoy. Will you ever stop collecting? I don't think that I'll ever stop collecting. I think I'll probably stop collecting certain things, but I think I will always collect Disney merchandise. Again, it really just depends as time goes on. Who knows what the future holds? Next, I'll start sorting all of the items. So here's all the ones I want to use, and then I'll start having the pile of ones over here that need to be put away in the closet. How do you find out about new Disney items coming out? This is another question I get very often and I follow a lot of Disney accounts over on Instagram, on Twitter, I follow all of the official like Funko, Target, like all those places just to see when they post stuff. Disney Parks blog is another good place to check for it's from the Parks merchandise. I just follow a lot of accounts, some of the personal shoppers and things, at the different parks around the world, seeing what items that they have available, checking Target every day, shop Disney every day, just seeing what new items come out when, and I try to inform you guys as soon as possible. I would just highly recommend following Shop Disney on all of the social medias because they will post when the new merch passes up and when a new key is coming out and things like that. So definitely follow the official accounts and then if you find any other sort of reliable news type outlets that show the new merchandise coming out like Mattel and different toy companies and brands that you really enjoy, just follow all of them and check their websites frequently and you will see the new information there. Where do you get most of your collection items from? Thank you so much. Here is just where I get all of my items from in no particular order. Target, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, Hot Topic, Box Lunch, The Disney Store, Hallmark, Shop Disney, eBay, all of those places' websites. I order a lot of stuff online, different places, and at the actual parks. I also do get some stuff at different Comic Cons, like local Comic Cons, Amazon, the Lego store, lego.com, Funko Shop, like the whole Funko website. There's a lot of places, but those are my most frequently visited, and that is where I get a majority of my items.
Alrighty, so it is now currently 8.19 and I've been doing this for five hours. So we're gonna call it a day. I literally got like all of the like displays done, all of, like the stuff around the bottom done, so that feels really good. But today I'm going to now redo all of the magnets and stickers and drawings, the mystery minis and the vinylmations. I'm gonna start my timer back up and hopefully I should finish my room today. Just a short 6 hours and 25 minutes to clean the bottom half of my room. So I cleaned behind my bed, the shelves next to my bed, the little display case here next to my bed, the shelves with the Lego on it and all the shelves above it, all of these shelves here on my desk in my display case, the mystery minis, the vinylmations took six hours and 25 minutes so I still need to do like my desk and clean up some of the drawers like I always do but I decided not to add that in here for this time because that's like a kind of like a separate thing in my opinion but that's just a little taste of what it takes to clean this room. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any more questions regarding my collection, displays, tips, tricks, any of those things, Leave them down below in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible. As always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and remember to do what you love and do what makes you happy. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!